Before sharing this video, which I had already done all the audio on and was getting ready to edit, I came across something because the Holy Spirit moved me to look a little deeper into this. The 1888 and the 1911 Great Controversy share a false prophetic message from a man named Dr. Joseph Wolfe, who was nowhere to be found in the original 1884 Great Controversy. Wolfe was a child of Jewish parents. In fact, his father was a rabbi. He later converted to Catholicism and used his Romish faith to preach Jesuit lies regarding the Second Coming. Why he is used as a viable reference for prophetic truth in their 1888 and 1911 Great Controversy books is very confusing, to say the least. They even puff him up as one who declared the Advent message and even called him the missionary to the world on page 357, paragraph 1 of the 1888. None of what this Romish student preached is found anywhere in the original Great Controversy. Not even his name is found. The Seventh-day Adventist leaders appear to have placed it in the 1888 and the 1911 Great Controversy so as to lend credence to the false prophecy of Rome, which we know can be used in the coming days to declare Antichrist is in fact Messiah who stands on earth. With that being said, please continue to watch the remainder of this video. As we know, Catholic prophecy is being preached in 100% of all Protestant churches today. And yes, this now includes the Seventh-day Adventist Church. What I'm about to share may shock some of you, still sitting in the SDA Church. But notice here what the Word of God says happens at the Second Coming. It says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. When Jesus returns, all the dead in Christ will be raised to life to meet the Lord Jesus in the clouds. Now, if you're a student of prophecy, you know that those that are alive at the second coming are the 144,000 that lived through the seven last plagues. They are then caught up with all the saints to meet the Lord in the air, to then ascend unto heaven to be forever with the Lord. Nowhere in this prophecy does it say that the Lord Jesus Christ touches the earth at the second coming. If you do some study, you will find that the Bible does say that at the end of the 1,000 years, Jesus will then return to earth with all the saints in the city of New Jerusalem, and then raise up the wicked dead that have laid dead all over the planet for 1,000 years, and then they will be forever destroyed with hellfire. It says this in Revelation 20, verses 5, 6, and 9, But the rest of the dead lived not again until a 1,000 years were finished. This is the first resurrection. By the way, that's the first resurrection that happens at the second coming. Going on, it says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. When it comes to the fate of the wicked people, it says this, And they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. That's the hellfire. I go into a lot more detail about what happens before, during, and after the 1,000 years on my 1,000 Years Explained page. And so to keep the video short, the prophetic fact here is that when Jesus Christ returns at his second coming, he does not touch the planet at all. However, as we know, Antichrist will stand on earth, for he is all about worldliness. And all the lost souls will think he is Messiah because their false prophets and all their apostate pastors taught them to believe that lie. And so the dying God of this world is doing all he can right now to make people believe in the exact same way he caused the Jews to believe 2,000 years ago. The Jewish people were taught back then by their apostate leaders that Messiah would come to bring peace on earth. And since that lie worked so well back then, Satan will use it again on the Christian churches so as to prevent them from being ready for Christ's return. All the Protestant churches teach this lie as if it is truth today. And now we see that the Seventh-day Adventist leaders are preaching the exact same lie in the 1888 and the 1911 Great Controversy. Check this out. It says this on page 359. Jesus of Nazareth, the true Messiah, he said, whose hands and feet were pierced, who was brought like a lamb to the slaughter, 
who was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, who after the scepter was taken from Judah and a legislative power from between his feet came the first time, shall come the second time in the clouds of heaven and with the trump of the archangel. And now check out what they say next. They then say that he shall stand upon the Mount of Olives at the second coming. And then they say, and that dominion once consigned to Adam over the creation and forfeited by him shall be given to Jesus. He shall be king over all the earth. The groanings and lamentations of creation shall cease, but songs of praise and thanksgiving shall be heard. When Jesus comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels, the dead believers shall rise first. And they even quote 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, which I read a moment ago, which they're taking completely out of context. And then they go on to say that this is what we Christians call the first resurrection. Then they go on to say that then the animal kingdom shall change its nature and shall be subdued unto Jesus. And then universal peace shall prevail. The Lord again shall look upon the earth and say, Behold, it is very good. And there you have it. What I just read is nowhere to be found in the original great controversy that you can get at vbates.com to see this for yourselves. Don't throw away your old 1888s or 1911s. Keep them as evidence books. Have them open on the table and then open up the 1884, the original 1884. That 1888 and 1911 are fiction. They were written by the Seventh-day Adventist leaders. What I just read in the 1888 Great Controversy is the exact opposite of what the Bible says. But at the same time, it is in direct agreement with what the Jesuits of Rome and all the Protestant churches of today are saying. This lie has moved them to preach both a secret rapture and a seven-year tribulation found nowhere in the Bible so as to make billions unready for the return of Christ. Well, that being the case, if you're SDA, what do you believe to be the wise decision here? Do you now stay in an apostate church that is doing all it can to cause you and your precious family to join them in hellfire? I mean, you're not going to get around what you just saw in the 1888. It's there. They're lying to you boldly. Your own Bible proves it. Or do you leave the long prophesied apostate Seventh-day Adventist church as prophecy says the remnant of her seed will do? Thank you for watching. God bless.